What if we told you that a hidden world lies beneath your feet? That our distant ancestors delved deep into the earth and created magnificent cities that leave us in awe? At first glance, the subterranean realms of antiquity seem simply breathtaking. But at second glance, they also raise a number of agonizing questions. How did people, thousands of years ago, manage to accomplish such architectural marvels in the first place? Who built the invisible cities? What purpose did they serve? And above all, what does a chicken have to do with one of the greatest archaeological sensations of the 20th century? Humans and caves can look back on a long history together. The natural shelters serve the earliest representatives of our species as living, cult, and burial spaces for thousands of years. The Rising Star Cave in South Africa and the French Lacoe Cave, with their irreplaceable fossils and overwhelming paintings, testify to the extraordinary significance that these hidden rock worlds had for the Homo species. But the bottom line is that it didn't always have to be neutral. When four Chinese farmers pumped the water out of a pond in 1992 to make it easier to catch fish, they were completely amazed to discover the opening of a grotto that led straight into the sculptured heart of a lost civilization. To date, 24 of these so-called Long Yu grottos have been discovered, and we still don't know who built them or what purpose they served. But if you now believe that such sensational chance discoveries are exclusively the work of humans, you are mistaken. In fact, the real Indiana Jones offcuts are sometimes much more compact and significantly more feathered. But what does this mean? Well, to understand this, we have to turn back the clock to 1963 and go to the small Turkish town of Derinkuyu in Cappadocia. Back then, a local resident was faced with an unusual problem. His chickens kept escaping through a hole in the cellar wall. At some point, the man finally got fed up with the clucking and decided to tear down the cellar wall without further ado. But what he then saw completely blew the chicken catcher's socks off. He had just opened the door to a lost world that had been hiding underground unnoticed for centuries. The Hidden Secrets of Derinkuyu It didn't take the archaeologists, who were then called in, long to realize that this was not just any lost world we were actually looking at a full-blown underground city. But what is it all about? Why did the inhabitants of antiquity dig a city into the ground? And who were these inhabitants anyways? Well, let's start with the established facts first. Christened Derinkuyu, just like its above-ground counterpart, the site penetrates a whopping 85 meters into the ground. In the same breath, the 2,500 square meter complex comprises at least eight floors, and his complexity simply leaves us speechless. The individual floors and chambers were not carved out of the stone at random, but were created as part of an overarching plan that left nothing to be desired. The upper sections were primarily used as living and sleeping quarters, but they also housed a wine press and a monastery complex. The lower levels were used as storage and meeting rooms, but this is by no means all. In fact, Derinkuyu even had a dungeon which was probably intended for renegade underground dwellers. However, faith was also not neglected far from the sunlight. In addition to the aforementioned monastery, there were also several small churches here, with the so-called Cloverleaf Church standing out in particular among the religious meeting places. Designed in the shape of a cross, this structure is 10 meters wide and 25 meters long. Interesting to know, humans were by no means the only living creatures to take refuge underground back then. The stables that have been discovered leave no doubt that the inhabitants of Derinkuyu lived side by side with their domestic animals. And speaking of inhabitants, estimates of the exact number of inhabitants vary drastically and are subject to strong fluctuations. All in all, however, between 3,000 and 50,000 people are likely to have lived here. But no matter how many inhabitants Derinkuyu may have ultimately housed, it is obvious that they were not exactly keen on uninvited guests given its hidden appearance. A wish that was ultimately reflected in the architecture. In order to literally seal Derinkuyu off from the outside world, its builders created so-called rolling stone doors. The massive closures, which weighed around 450 kilos, were visually reminiscent of millstones. And in the event of danger, they could be rolled in front of the entrance from the inside and transformed into an obstacle that could hardly be overcome from the outside. 
However, the people inside were not completely sealed off. Communication with the world above ground was maintained with the help of shafts that led from the first two floors to the outside. In detail, these ancient intercom systems were 3 to 4 meters long and had a diameter of around 10 centimeters. The elaborate ventilation system is no less ingenious. In order to supply the underground city with the necessary air and maintain air circulation, the creators of Derakuyu built more than 15,000 shafts on the top floor alone. Again, the fact that the ventilation systems still work to this day is particularly astounding. At the same time, the air shafts were also used to transport water, and the inhabitants of the above-ground Derinkuyu were still drawing water from these wells shortly before the sensational discovery, unaware of the archaeological wonder they were connected to. And yet everything could have been so simple. Anyone who translates the Turkish term Derinkuyu will realize that it means nothing other than deep well or shaft. But leaving aside all the nonsensical comments, it cannot be denied that all the details, the imposing dimensions, and the sophisticated design of Derinkuyu are astonishing to say the least. Nevertheless, there are also a number of much more fundamental questions that we have not yet addressed in detail, and which experts have been racking their brains over for decades. Who built Derinkuyu and why? Before we go into this historical mystery in more detail, we must first consider another, no less remarkable fact. Derinkuyu is not an isolated case. On the contrary, to date, no fewer than 36 of these hidden kingdoms have been identified in Cappadocia. Furthermore, the exceptional finds to date are probably just the tip of the archaeological iceberg. Researchers suspect that a total of 50 settlements lie dormant beneath the surface in the region. Somewhat more confident estimates are even higher, sometimes running into the hundreds. And even if we don't know how many cities really lie hidden in the end, they and Derinkuyu have something in common. We can't say with absolute certainty when they were built, and which people were responsible for them. Some researchers see the Hittites as the forefathers of the sealed-off city worlds. In the second millennium BC, this ethnic group from Asia Minor was active in Syria and parts of the present-day Lebanon, among other places, although their capital, Hattusu, was located in north-central Turkey. On the other hand, Derinkuyu was not built by the Hittites, but by the Phrygians. Traces of this Indo-European people can be traced back to the 8th century BC, but by this time, the Phrygians already ruled an extensive empire in the center of Asia Minor. However, the Christians are also suspected of having left a subterranean mystery for posterity. However, this theory is based on the assumption that Derinkuyu and company were born out of necessity. The persecuted Christians needed a safe haven to escape the gaze of their persecutors. And although the true origins of Derinkuyu remain in the historical shadows, it is at least considered certain that it was actually the Christian inhabitants who gave the city its current appearance between the 6th and 10th centuries. But must the creation of the complex necessarily have been based on a longing for an isolated place of protection? Or are there perhaps other approaches that could plausibly explain the existence of Derinkuyu? Well, it is undisputed that the Christians did not have an easy time of it in the Roman Empire. Initially only carried out spontaneously and regionally, the Roman persecution of Christians reached a completely new level in the 3rd century. From then on, it was an imperially ordered, statewide measure aimed at slowing down the growth of the new religion and permanently destroying its structures. However, in addition to the Romans, the Christians were also not on good terms with the Seljuks, while the heyday of this dynasty of princes is dated to the period between 1047 and 1157 AD, it ruled an empire that stretched across Central Asia and parts of the Arabian Peninsula. However, it is also possible that the worst enemy of the Derinkuyu builders was not other ethnic groups, but the weather. This admittedly not quite so spectacular exploration theory refers to the extreme climatic conditions that prevailed in the region in question. While winters are bitterly cold and snowy, summers are characterized by scorching heat and long periods of drought. Underground, however, one is immune to the merciless weather, and in an environment that offers constant temperatures and reliable protection from the wet, the harvest could be stored without worry. Before the facility was significantly altered by the Christians, the underground granary may have had another advantage. Due to its hidden location, the risk of being plundered by thieves was pleasantly low. 
The hurdle that separates you from never missing an exciting video again is also pleasantly low. Feel free to press the like and subscribe button now and stay up to date from now on.